right, hello everyone, and welcome to Star Trek Fenrir. Uh, Fenrir is a tabletop role-playing game that uses the Star Trek Adventures rule set by Modifius Entertainment. We're set in 2410 aboard a Cerberus class that is following in the footsteps of the USS Ophion. You don't need to have watched Ophion to enjoy this game, though you might catch a few references and subtle nods if you do. You can find the VODs for both Fenrir and Ophion on my YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions. Today's session is building on last week's session where we're sort of channeling uh, Night Terrors from TNG and other sort of horror-themed episodes of Star Trek. I think it's working out pretty well so far, but let's see where the night takes us. Uh, another announcement I have to say is that, as I said last week, I still have an active Kickstarter going. Uh, it is for an original system and setting known as Mermaids After the End. Uh, kind of a quick elevator pitch. It's a post-apocalyptic transhumanist oceanic setting that has sort of the unique quality of using a dice pool and target number system that uses D12, which means you finally have a nice uh, a use for those D12s, because I think they're used maybe once or twice in D&D. You know what I'm saying. Uh, I encourage you guys to check it out, um, especially because we're very close to our first stretch goal, so uh, I think the moderators know the command in chat, and I'll try to remember to throw it in the YouTube description. Uh, that's all I really have to say. Uh, aside from the fact that whatever support you can provide to the stream, be a follow, sub, donation, bits, patron, talking in chat, whatever, it's all greatly appreciated. And with that said, let's go ahead and run the intro and dive right in. And welcome back. So as you may or may not know, if you follow my streams, is that I like having an opening monologue that is read and prepared by the players. And for Star Trek Adventures, that means an opening log. And tonight, I think a certain Cartwright has that. So Lovecraft, take it away. All right. So the log plays as a voiceover, Lieutenant Cartwright emerging from a turbo lift, which has just reached the bridge, and he sort of waddles out of the doorway towards the security or tactical console. Lieutenant Cartwright's personal log. Taking over primary shift tactical operations on the bridge, I must admit to feeling a certain exuberance, despite the dire situation in which the Fenrir and her crew find themselves. Unfortunately, Commander Williams has locked his bridge controls into his preferred uh, diminutive configuration, leaving me with an additional unintended challenge. Cartwright reaches the tactical station, he raises up a meaty fist, and then sort of like gestures towards the controls for a moment, extends one finger, pauses, lowers it, comes back, and gently taps at a control, kind of like a chicken pecking at the ground or a child just learning how to type with two fingers. The commander has joined an away team, departing by runabout to investigate an artificially created warp bubble. The bubble itself appears to have burst free from a subspace web of some kind created by the Tholians. Its unstable expansion is sending out gamma irradiated shards or tendrils, several of which have impacted and even impaled the Fenrir, trapping us here. While I've kept a stiff upper lip, many of the crew are eminently distraught over the strange occurrences that abound across our vessel, disturbing computer malfunctions, spatial anomalies, and more. And the senior staff insists that numerous crew members have disappeared, including Commander Maddox's wife, all record and memory of them erased. Strange that, having a relationship between only two people. Ugh, so unnatural. <laughs> At any rate, I fear for the commander's sanity, as he reports hearing an unknown female voice beckoning him towards the warp bubble. Nonetheless, it is not for one such as I to question my superiors, and should I perish, I do so at my post, in service of my captain, my ship, and its gods. As the humans might say, Durke e decorum est pro patria mori, or in the immortal words of my own illustrious Hydran kingdom, 
and from his mouth an incoherent screech sounds out, something like the squealing of brakes and nails on a chalkboard combined with the feeling of tinfoil on a filling. He releases a huffing sigh. Oh, bother. And the log ends. <laughs> you may have a momentum for that lovely log. I love it when Cartwright's on screen or basically in any capacity. So, uh, as he did just say, the Fenrir has found itself within an area of space where physics and reality and perception have more or less gone out of whack. Um, there has been things like missing people that have vanished from almost everyone's memories. Uh, there are instances where doors will open up into the void of space. Um, basically, a lot of weird and unnatural things are happening. And to get to the bottom of it all, an away team was sent on a runabout to head towards the center of the space, where, supposedly, the anomalies that the Fenrir is experiencing are centered on. So we're going to start our first scene uh, on the runabout with the away team. Now, Matic, Williams, Alel, Tobin, you're sort of towards the front uh, doing your own thing, but specifically, Commander Rast... So, Commander Rast, you were doing some sort of leisure activity. Uh, maybe reading a book, maybe taking a bath, you know, whatever you do to relax. You closed your eyes for a moment. Maybe, you know, sort of did one of those tired where you rubbed the bridge of your nose and the, the little corners of your eyes. And then when you open them again, you find yourself in the back of a runabout. <laughs> okay. Um, he'll stand up and uh, start walking through the runabout. And I think, Tobin, you are the first to see them. Okay. Uh, Commander, may I help you? Where? He just raises up his hand and, uh, maybe. Uh, where are we? We're on board the Hades class runabout en route to the uh, warp bubble, sir. Okay. All right. Uh, very well. Carry on. Uh, <clears throat> yes, sir. And then it continues up front. Yep. And uh, Alel and Maddock and Williams, uh, the door opens behind you. And if any of you swivel, there's Commander yep. Rast. Question. Yes. He didn't. Did he board the shuttle with us? No. So. Okay. Because so we're not crazy. You're not crazy. <laughs> okay. Um, LL kind of hears the door and kind of expects it to be uh, Lee because he's the only one that was supposed to be back there. <laughs> then she sees the commander. And she's like, how did you get here? Completely unfazed. Uh, he takes a seat and says, uh, I just came from the back. Alal kind of just faces the front again, like, okay. <laughs> you know, Commander, you're the first officer. You don't have to stow away to come on away missions. I think that's your prerogative. I, I was, I was actually reading uh, and preparing logs for the captain, and I appeared in the back. All right then. It was oh. not my intention to uh, to be here. Uh, everyone is uh, definitely in capable hands. And he, t and he uh, continues in his seat. Actually, he'll take the seat up here next to uh, Williams. Okay. <laughs> so, as you all yeah. process... Make, your... Make yourself at home. So, as you all process that uh, in your own unique ways, uh, out of the front screen of the runabout... Um, thanks to a little bit of Dag's, uh, or Lieutenant Commander Vassar and a little bit of uh, Commander Lee Tobin, uh, their work combined has given you sort of a, a purplish-hued spiderweb type scenario looking out of the main view screen. Um, every once in a while, your deflector pulses, and almost like a, a light shock wave kind of illuminates all the filaments and patterns uh, that are sort of forming a tangled web in the space beyond. And the further the runabout goes, the more densely compact these tendrils get. So, uh, I'm going to need two rolls here. The first is going to affect the second tremendously. Um, and this is going to be Tobin. 
Uh, this is, or Lee Tobin, this is going to be your role first. Uh, this is going to be a simple control science. Uh, difficulty of one. And instead of getting momentum, uh, what I will say is that for every success you get uh, over one, you will reduce the difficulty of the following tasks by one. So basically it's one difficulty for one momentum if you succeed. It's a okay. little bit weird, but I think it'll work out well. And the mental repository and the advantage we created last session, does that apply in any way? It or? definitely does. Okay. So, and and I, I would say if someone wants to roll a d20 for the shuttle, uh, you need to roll below a 8. And I have a focus in this? You do indeed. All right, there's two successes already. Unfortunately, no help from the shuttle. So, uh... Tobin, or I gotta remember, it's Lee Tobin, not or Lee, because you're a Bajoran, so it's it's backwards. It, I get confused sometimes, so don't worry about it. So right. it's Lee, right? Yeah, it's, it's it's supposed to be Lieutenant Commander Lee, but I keep saying Tobin. Okay. So. Okay. Um. Anyway. On a first name basis. Yeah, you know. Uh. So Lieutenant Commander Lee, uh, you are just monitoring and making sure that the deflector is sending out those pulses in a regular fashion, and keeping your helms officers happy. Up at the helm, of course, you still have to navigate. So looking between Mr. Rast and Mr. Williams, which of you would like to take this helm task? It will be a daring con. The difficulty after accounting for the reduction that was just rolled will be a difficulty of three. Oh, Rast is, Rast is going to attempt to assist. Okay. All right. And I believe you have two momentum at the moment. So that's Daring Con. Uh, I will spend a point of momentum. Okay. And uh, I assume Helm Operations applies as a focus? Most definitely. All right. Very nice. That's already three successes. And another success from Ras for a total of four successes, which means you get the momentum right back. So, uh, with Williams and Rast working in tandem, you are able to sort of dip and dive the shuttle around these purple huge spider web tendrils, but it gets progressively more difficult the further you go in. And the more you go, the more you come to realize that the purple hue, the purple light coming from the view screen, is, glow, is growing brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter uh, to the point where it's almost blinding, like you have to sort of squint a little bit to see through it. And my question is going to be, how far do you go in before you go to sensors only, if at all? Uh, I think maybe at the point where we physically cannot look into the view screen Mm -hmm. uh, for the brightness, then we'll we'll fly by sensors. Okay. So, uh, you toggle the shutter on the window, and it rolls up and rolls down, sort of meets in the middle, and you begin flying by sensors only. Uh, it's maybe a little bit of a startling experience, uh, except not for an experienced pilot like Rast and Williams. You have both had extensive experience with flying by sensors only. Um, but specifically... As you are flying, what happens is there is a sudden collision warming, and before you can react, there's a jolt through the shuttle, and then you seem to come to a stop. Felt like a collision. Commander Lee, can I get an external scan? Uh, right away, sir. Just uh, give me a moment. I'm going to transfer my controls to the uh, the bridge of the runabout. I will set science controls to the bridge, and I will join them. Okay. Sure. I need a reason science, a uh, difficulty of one, and now that I actually remembered, I did stats for our lovely shuttle. Uh, the shuttle will assist with a, re or a sensor science. And it's difficulty one? I think it's a difficult one. No help for the shuttle. All right. 
So I'll use my augmented ability reason. Okay. So that's four successes, which means you get three momentum. You're up to five. It's very... And remember, you can't ask me questions, and I, I believe you get a free one as science officer. And with my mental repository in effect, I think I get a second free question as well. Even better. So your base success tells you the following. There's a Class M atmosphere outside. You appear to have landed on something. Okay. Um, in, um, terms, in terms of questions, uh, I had two in mind. The first is, and I'm not necessarily asking this, I'm just throwing out to the group. Uh, do we detect... L what life signs do we detect? And I'm kind of thinking of the lost crew members or whatever else might be here. And the second question I was thinking about was, um, do I detect anything inside this environment that might account for that stasis field or the cellular stasis that we encountered earlier on in the uh, on the Fenrir? Um, for, uh, because last session you said that Matic was here previously, was mm -hmm. there a Class M environment in this area? There was not, no. Uh. And sort of as a reminder, the area of space that the Fenrir is in currently, there used to be something here, Matic, and I think that's where the confusion is. There used to be something here, but for a radius of three light years, it's almost as if everything in the space has been shunted off or destroyed or otherwise removed from reality. So, which questions do you want to go with? Those two. I might want to unmute. Um, Commander Lee. The uh, things around the the way that space has been distorted and the way that everything's kind of going on. How similar is it to the uh, the space that? the sphere builders uh, was creating or does it seem similar to the space the space the sphere builders were creating whenever um, Captain Archer first encountered the Zindi uh, sorry out of character do you want to pose that as a question because I'm posing it as a question to you like do the signs seem okay uh, then I will use one of the momentum spends to ask that. Does it look like it's the impingement of another universe on our own, or is it at all similar to the experience with the sphere builders and their attempt to sort of terraform space? The first part is yes. And what I would say, it is almost as if you have transitioned to another region of subspace. And as a reminder, subspace is sort of an infinite dimensional sort of under realm, I guess you could qualify it. Um, and to have so suddenly and so, I don't want to say violently, but so... Effortlessly? There we go. Effortlessly was the word I wanted. Um, is very odd. Like, it should be very hard to just willy-nilly transition between. But based on what's happened so far, maybe makes a little bit sense. Um... How similar are the readings that Lee's providing to whenever uh, Matic was in subspace, whenever we were dealing with the Opterans and the... Uh, the um, it was the Opterans. The, those Opterans and the Trezak, I think, whenever we destroyed their ship after dealing with the old ones of the subspace. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say that the Opteran, because you went into a subspace manifold then, this is something similar. And I will say that is part of the answer to that question. Um, Wasn't there something like um, size-wise going on? Like shrinking, things getting big? Well, that was the... Uh, that was something that Matic found out. Uh, it's Isn't it the, like the uh, whole solar system shrank to the size of like a baseball uh, or something? Cla uh, Class J, like Jupiter, will go down to a baseball, but there are no signs that that has happened. Okay. Uh, okay. Is... It's the uh, subspace... It's a subspace... The, da, 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 da. 
Yeah, I was say, I'm going to go ahead and just make it so everybody can see these. Because I think that will help a little bit. Alright, you all, everybody now should have access to three handouts in Roll20. And these are the handouts we more or less went over uh, in last session. And if we need to repeat it, uh, go, f go ahead and feel free. Never hurts to have a refresher. So, okay. You said yes, that it seems like there is another universe at play here in where we're at. Correct. But in the problems with scanning, you say that there are no signs there's an alternate universe? Also correct. So that's your first question. What is the second question you get for free? I would really like to go for the life forms in this region. With the momentum spend or the uh, free from either of your talent or role, there are life forms out there. In fact, you're reading a number of crewmen that supposedly went missing. I believe I said it was what, 40, 50? Mm. Um, yeah, you're seeing that many. You're seeing those life signs out there in the class M environment. Can I scan to see if they're healthy or if there's like anomalies going on? Sure. Go them? ahead and roll me a reason medicine difficulty of two. Okay. It's almost reminiscent of where it is all else. There. What happened to the crew of the Enterprise D? In what situation? Forensic science. Sure. Well, I remember reading in the Academy that the Enterprise made modifications to their long range sensors, the LaForge array. Uh, it delved deep into a, a, a subdomain of subspace, one of the infinite domains, and attracted the attention of hostile aliens. The, yes, the Solarangian based life forms. Right. I remember reading about that at the Academy, too. I just remember in reviewing that mission log, those aliens sent a probe into our reality. I wonder if this could be in some way related, or at least if through history we can find some solution. Williams, raise your mic a little bit. We are getting a little bit of weirdness. Oh. And, there we go. Sorry. Yeah, you're fine. Were you um, able to hear me? Yeah, we can we we can okay. hear you just fine. It was just it was a little bit weird. So, but we're in a weird part of space. This is also true. Mm -hmm. uh, so, to answer Alel scan though, uh, before we get too into the weeds, um, they seem fine. But I would say because of certain circumstances, you're able to identify that one of them is Jensen. And Jensen is the healthiest he's ever been. Is this thing broken? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it could be the fact that... It, don't forget, Lieutenant, that it could be the fact that he is uh, part uh, dulled. The non-corporal... What? No, non -corp it's a non-corporal uh, entity. Um, imagine the cube, but not as an asshole. Oh, he's part that? Yeah. Okay, like, isn't he part Elorian, like Guinan's race? It's, it's not Elorian, it's Dold. It's, it's Dowd, yeah. Dowd, Dowd. Dowd. Oh, okay, yeah. No, sorry. Kevin Uxbridge? Yeah. Yeah. But he, okay. with that little part of him, something like this could... That part of him could be awakened, I guess. He may not have the abilities, but he may still have the fortitude given to him by that bloodline. Uh, so she'll just say, well, I'm reporting the rest of them are healthy, as far as I can tell. Which means we should probably go find them. Can, I agree. You, can we localize their position? Yeah, they're about a uh, kilometer out the door and to the left. <laughs> uh, what um, if we open the shutter a little? All right. 
because we've been we've been in the dark here so all right so you open the shutter and i can actually uh move us to this map so what you see outside of the shutter is what appears to be a dark forest uh formed of not so much trees as these dense black columns or dense crystal uh, that sort of jut up and go up into darkness. The ground is covered in a bluish black, I wouldn't call it grass, but some form of biological substance. And the light here is very dim, almost like a twilight. Um, in fact, the running lights of the runabout are probably the most, or are probably the biggest source of light here. And probably what's really important is that uh, the light is reflecting off of spider webs. It's almost as if this entire area between these crystals, between whatever plant life exists here, there are spider web tendrils that connect everything. Um, it's almost as if there's a giant spider living here, if that makes any sense. This is going to sound like a strange question, but... Um... Could I test the ground? Is it uh, supportive? Does it seem odd in any way? Is it uh, softer than I would expect? Well, why don't we try raising one of the crew members first? Maybe they could try to do some exterior test without us. Because it could be false sensor readings or they could be real sensors. It's been a strange day so far. Well, Captain, uh, sorry, Commander, that's your prerogative, or at least Commander Rath's prerogative. Yeah, let's try Let's try to raise them and see what we can get from them, um, but I think we should be ready to, uh, to head out. Okay, so which of the crewmen do you hail? There is Jensen, there is Savia, there's also unnamed crewmen who you can just give a name and I'll make something up on the spot. I say Savia. I feel, like, feel like Matic probably wants to call his wife. Yeah. Matic will try to raise Savia. This is Savia here. Go ahead, Matic. Um, are you okay? A little weird about where I am, but yeah, I'm fine. Uh, where are you? Uh, we're in a shuttle. We just entered the uh, void. Um, what seems to be going on out there? Well, this is going to sound odd, but maybe it's better that you just come see it for yourself. Um, Matic wants to run. He'll send he'll send a message off to Williams, uh, that says uh, run Savia's voice through uh, the speech recognition to see if it's her or if it's a generation of her voice in some way. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, I can do that as um, GM, or you can require a roll for that. I will indeed, because I think it's interesting. Uh, this is going to be a insight, and let's call this insight command. Uh, the difficulty on this will be a four, and the runabout will assist you with a computers in command. Okay. Uh, how much momentum do we have? Looks like five at the moment. spend three. Okay. And it's going to be command. Um, just going to check. I don't think I have any applicable focuses here. Uh, however, because this is sort of a sort of outside the box, I'd like to we'll, we'll do it early today. Uh, I'm going to spend my point of determination okay. to access my value. Whatever remains, however improbable must be the truth okay uh to to get that so do you still want the two extra die no, or just the one just the, just the one then you get them a point of momentum right back oh oh dear uh oh. do you want to challenge a value and spend determination again or are we keeping that because that is at least one complication because yep, we still have to roll for the ship. The ship could crit and succeed here. So let's let's see that computer's con from the Hades class runabout. Okay. Okay. No, I will. Uh, I will challenge a value. 
Okay. Um, I will. Uh, Wims perhaps is a little too brash, uh, and maybe a little overconfident, or overconfident rather. So I'm going to challenge flares the difference between artistry and mere competence. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to re-roll those uh, those three dice. All right. And after you've done so, just remember to make a uh, a note on your character sheet that that value needs to be replaced at the end of the session. All right, a significant dis difference. Uh, that is three, four, five. I see seven successes, which means you are capped on momentum. And uh, what you find is very poignant, uh, specifically because it is Savia's voice. You can confirm it is hers not being generated. Uh, however, there is... I'm going to give this to you for free. There is an elevated amount of stress. Like, more so than just, hey, this is weird. More a... I don't want to be here. I'm on the edge of a panic panic attack type stress. Savia, who else can you see with you? As I said, perhaps it's best you come to us. Where we're landed, we're not able to... The ship took damage, so we're not able to uh, exit the ship right now. Um... Is there a way that you could try to... <laughs> there was a uh, Discord chat that popped up on my screen. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> is there a way that you could just... Describe or just tell me... Give me an idea of what it is out there. Um, I mean, like I said, it's... We took damage whenever we were landing. The doors not able to open, and the shutters seem to be stuck. We have no idea what's outside. Could you? I forget, honey. Did you ever read Alice in Wonderland? The original or the Disney one? Uh, either's fine. You remember the Mad Hatter table? Oh, yeah. I was like, yes, I do. I do. <laughs> yeah, there's that, and it's not the Mad Hatter. It's someone else oh shit is this somebody that we know <laughs> if you know them we need to have a conversation is it male or female the latter or uh, by all appearances are you safe oh myself and the rest of the crew are fine it's just we're all a little bit flummoxed Whatever that means. Um, What's keeping them from leaving? Out of character. Was that an in character or out of character question? She's going to ask, like, just lean over and ask. What's keeping you from leaving? Well, none of us have our tricorders. I mean, we have our comm badges, but that's really all we have besides our uniforms. We have no way of navigating the sort of twilight darkness that is outside this table. So, we're not really being kept here, but we can't also leave without getting lost. The person at the table. If you were to step forward and tell them, I am here, how do they react? They're currently in a conversation with Jensen. Oh, fuck. <laughs> what are they discussing? It's best that you come here and see for yourself. Are there any ways to get in there undetected? Well, you could uh, go sneaking through the crystal forest. Uh, that or you could just literally transport there. We lock onto their signals and beam them to our location. Maddox gonna hit the uh, mute button real quick. Um, so, if you feel this is a trap, raise your hand. I don't think we need to do that, sir. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I may, sir, even if this is a trap, we have a responsibility to the crew members that we've left behind. And I would imagine that, no offense to your wife, 
each one of us is a good deal more competent than anyone there, particularly since they're weighed down by Jensen. But, um... <laughs> My gosh! Here's the thing <laughs> I'll say on knew. Jensen's behalf. <laughs> he is incompetent. He is a headache. He is somebody that I would like to use as a, uh, as a, uh, firing range target. However, whenever he decides to pull something out of his ass, he pulls something out of his ass. Like, but I keep, I keep telling you, you're not actually allowed to do that. <laughs> well, sir, I, I certainly That's... wouldn't go that far, but, um, let's get ready. I don't know how to let's end that sentence, to go. so. <clears throat> well, I mean, should we walk in? Should we transport? I, mean, I think we're in agreement. This is a trap. Like it's something's one gonna kilometer bounce sideways. The, to um, the left. Yep, just over there. <clears throat> yeah. So oh. should we walk in or should we transport in? I believe that we should walk in. It gives us an opportunity to uh, assess the rest of the environment. Great. And I mean, unless we want to let Commander Lee run some diagnostics, I don't know if we're not in normal space. Transporters may not have normal function, and power systems may not behave as we expect them to. Well, Commander Ras transported here without even asking for it, so I don't trust anything right now <laughs> except what's below my feet, and even right. that's sketchy. All right. Um, at this point, GM Williams is going to get out of his seat. Okay. Um, he's going to go to the weapons locker. Okay. Uh, open it, and he's going to start distributing phaser rifles. Okay, now that is a... Two, I know. All right, so it's two <laughs> momentum and one threat, just so you know. know. He's like, he's like, yeah, I know. Just this, we're doing this. Okay. Um, whenever everybody leaves, Maddox just gonna... Maddox, Jeffrey, are you there? There is no reply. Is there a signal sent though? Like is like is the I mean signal... you can you can tell that your combat sent out a signal, but your Opteran friend from the Arcadia is not here. Yeah. Oh, well, Alright. So my question is, who is the first out of the airlock? Rast will take the lead. Okay. Commander Rast, I need you to roll me a fitness security of a difficulty of one. Any uh, apl applicable focuses? Do you have uh, balance, coordination, reflexes? Hand-to-hand -hand combat. <laughs> sure. <why not? laughs> it's about the power systems, though, <laughs> of the situation. I'll say yes, and I'll, I'll make it work depending on what you roll. All right. So with the one success, uh, Rast, you step out of the airlock and... As you emerge into this twilight crystal forest, uh, your foot maybe sinks a little bit further than you thought into the ground, but you're, you have balance. You're, you're, you have training in hand-to-hand -hand combat. You know how to shift your balance around. So you're able to catch yourself before you embarrass and, you know, tumble over yourself. But uh, after a moment, as you step down, maybe get a feel, it's almost like you're walking on moss. Um, so there is a little bit of give, but not too, too much. But the air is breathable. Uh, it's a, probably a little bit chilly. I would say somewhere in the neighborhood of, I don't remember the conversion off the top of my head, but somewhere in the neighborhood of like 58 to 62 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, which I think is what, 15, 20 centigrade? Either way, uh, it's a spring winter type feel, if that makes any sense. I, uh, everyone watch your step and he will assist people uh, down. Okay. I will hop. So as you all leave uh, the confines of the runabout, my question is, how are you going to be navigating that gets you back to the runabout? Like, are you going to pull Hansel and Gretel? Are yeah, you simply going to? We should do that. Um. Or whatever other option there is. Is Vassar here? But that's actually something I was going to say. That as you all step out of the shuttle and the door closes, Vassar. You hail the shuttle to get a status update, and nobody on the shuttle replies. So we is have he, a quote. Is we, he booted up? Yeah. So because kind of, was... kind of a scene shift here, mid scene shift. We switch back to the bridge of the Fenrir real quick, where the captain and Vassar are. And Vassar, you have just tried to send a hail, and no one has answered. 
No response from the shuttle, Captain. I will keep hailing. Are you still getting that interference? Am I still getting interference? You are. Yes. Thanks for the update. <laughs> okay, is this is this Sar powered up though? Because I remember we had to disconnect him. Right, he was disconnected from the main computer, but he's on his mobile emitter right now. Okay, okay, okay. Um, just question as we're leaving the shuttlecraft, and I'll mm-hmm. also respond to your question. Um, I would like to scan the web work material. I'd like to know what it's made of, if possible, using my tricorder. Interesting. And I, would I also be able to use the tricorder to set up a series of, um, I don't know, minor gamma radiation spikes in order to use those as a, a, bre- a metaphorical bread trail, trail crumb to lead us back to the shuttle? I like it. Let's handle this in two tasks. Sure. Uh, the first task, to determine the composition of these threads, let's do a reason science. Let's make the difficulty a three. And if you have someone assisting you, you can, but they would have to describe how they're assisting. Would I have a focus for this? or Do you have subspace dynamics? I do. Then it would apply. Okay. I'd also like to use my augmented ability reason. Okay. And buy a die for 3d20. Okay. So there's a grand total of four successes, which means you get the momentum right back. Remember how you mentioned Solana Gen earlier? Uh, sorry, actually, because I used augmented ability, uh, we have a complication. Ooh, interesting. I'm going to take threat for it. Oh. So. Hey. I, like <laughs> I don't like that option at all. Wow. Well. Uh, but you remember how you guys were mentioning Solanogen earlier? Uh, this is a Solanogen crystalline thread, which should only exist in subspace. Commander, I've taken some readings of this webwork material. Apparently, our earlier supposition was correct. We do seem to be in a Solanogen based realm. Uh, Commander Williams. Might it be possible to modulate our phasers in some way to be more effective? Perhaps we could cut through some of this web work to make our travel easier. I think... Yeah, I, th- I think so. Wouldn't we run the risk of the same way that a spider builds its web? By interfering with part of it, they would be alerted to where we are. We're trying to sneak around doesn't really help to just cut a straight line. True enough, Commander. I was thinking more that uh, if it became necessary for us to make a quick egress, um, it would be nice to know that we could cut through anything that's in our way. And Williams, I'd like you to roll me an insight security difficulty of two. Uh, yeah, sure. And Rast, why don't you do one as well? All right. Uh, difficulty on this is a two. Security. Um, spend the momentum to get a, an extra uh, d20. Um, and GM does my... Is this about modifying the, the phasers? Modifying the phasers or survival. Either would apply here. Okay, cool. Yeah, I've got I've got hand phasers. So we'll use that one. So three successes from Williams. And then two from Rass. So you get a momentum right back. So... You're going to learn two separate things. Uh, Williams, you realize that the threads are very easily moved by phaser. You could essentially turn the phaser into like a mini tractor beam and push it out that way. So it wouldn't destroy the threads, um, but it would more or less make a path for you. Rast, you recall that Solanogen can be very unstable at times meaning you probably don't want to actually shoot them with a full phaser. I was going to suggest something on that lines. So so much like a spider web, I believe that these may cascade if we uh, attempt to destroy any of them. At the anchor line, the whole thing comes down. Well, uh... Well, or a chain reaction of sorts. That's less good. But uh, we may not need to. I can modulate 
the phaser rifles to emit a sustained graviton pulse. Uh, this will allow us to interact with the Solanogen webs without actually having to come into physical contact. We can actually push a path open without damaging it. Well, as stated before, I believe that we should try to avoid the avoid them if possible, because touching them may very well signal something, as you stated previously. Oh, I was I was under the impression that if, if we like hit it with a like a, a standard like phaser blast, it would do that rather than the rather than the modification. I think if we move them, it'll have the same basic effect. That's the case. Maybe we just try to get through them. Uh, I mean, Lieutenant LL, is there any any risk to our health if we accidentally come into contact with some of the Solanogen? Uh, I'd have to run some tests. I've never come into contact with this before. So can I run some scans? Sure. Uh, let's have you do a insight in medicine. Uh, difficulty of two. Forensic science? Um, I'm gonna say no, but this is an activation for Alel. You could give her a new focus. Oh, I thought I already gave her one. Well, it's every time you activate her in a in a session, oh, you get to do it again. Okay. Like biochemistry or something, that'd be cool. Yeah, biochem would work. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So yeah. Reason, or insight medicine, difficulty of two. Ooh. I'm gonna take, no, I'm not gonna take threat. Here's what you say, what Alel sees. Alel thinks that Rast in particular with his Beta Z Romulan physiology might experience hallucinogenic effects due to his potential innate Enhanced. Enhanced sensory perception is, I think, how I would say it. Okay. Um, and you any, believe this any... adamantly. So, is he... Okay. Alel, uh, she stands at the tricorder as information comes in, kind of confused. Says, Commander, it's better if you don't touch it. Um, just don't touch it. Very well. And with that, um, Rast is going to just reach out into the area mm -hmm. um, with his mind to see if he can feel anything around them. I thought you were going to say you're reaching out to touch the slot. Like this. <laughs> like, well, it, it, was phys it was physical touching, right? Yeah. Or is it? Okay, okay, good. Jesus. So <laughs> let's see. Rast, go ahead and roll me a. Let's do a control. In a command, let's make this a difficulty of three. Uh, while he's doing that, the uh, voice that talked to Medic earlier that said, come find me, has it said anything else to him? Not yet, no. I'll spend a momentum. Okay. Oh. Four successes, which means you get the momentum right back. You guys are hovering at four tonight. It's great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You do sense a presence, Rast, but unlike, say, the planet, or unlike, well, I guess both planets, I should say, the Vulcan zombie planet and the ocean that was a live planet, this is more localized. It's not everywhere in the crystalline forest. It is specifically in the direction that you would expect to find your crewmen in. It does not seem capable of having a conversation, though. Like, if you were to try and uh, do, like, a telepathy with it, it does not seem to be able to reply or even give a sign that it has heard you. Okay. There is something out there. I... I can feel it, but it doesn't seem to be... intelligent enough to interact with. Uh, I would like to take out a medical tricorder and scan the commander's brain to see if there are any abnormalities with respect to psilocyanine production or anything like that to see if there are any adverse effects from this telepathic contact. And as I'm doing so, I'll approach him and ask, uh, Commander, did you get any sense of its intentions or its emotional state? 
Did it have any sort of emotional states there? It was almost like reading a Ferengi, where telepathy doesn't really work on them. You're just sens sensing the presence. You're not getting emotional state. You're not getting thoughts. You just know they're there. Uh, very much like a Ferengi. That's horrifying. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Alal's going to be like, she's crossing her arms and kind of pacing around Rast to make sure he hasn't touched anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And just keeping an eye on it. Uh, Lieutenant, are you all right? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. She, she does that, though. Okay. okay. I will she's, surreptitiously scan her as well. She's very protective <laughs> of all of her potential patients. All right. And I yeah. would say the, uh, the scan, they're both fine. Everything is within acceptable parameters. We're just right. weird. <laughs> Well, shall we? We shall. All right. So you begin heading that way to the left, uh, following the tricorder and maybe Rast's perception. Mm -hmm. And what I would say is we can handle this one of two ways. Either we can simply say that you get there, but you've touched some tendrils in the process, or we can make this an extended task where you guys deliberately try and not touch the tendrils. Because there's just so many, like, spiderweb bits everywhere that it's highly likely that you would touch them. But again, if you want to avoid them, we can actually make it a task. Um, we are, we are going to try our best to avoid them. Okay. Matic would like to suggest something. Go for it. Um, Rast, uh, I suggest that... Uh, we probably split into two separate teams. Um, I can take one, or I could even go by myself. Um, I will cause a disturbance in the tendrils, uh, more in a direct line path. Hopefully it'll get the entity's attention on me, and the rest of you could sneak to a better flanking position to get a better understanding of the situation. I'm not a huge fan of separating us out, but I do like some aspects of what you were talking about. Um, I think it might not be a bad idea for us to just see if we can call out whatever is here and just be prepared for it. One of us can pretend like we are with the other crewmen and report back. Well, yeah. the entity there has already spoken to me saying to come find me to come find her right. it's it knows that we're here but it may not know where we are you know commander if i may if we want to go with commander maddox's suggestion we might be able to modify a tra a uh, phaser or a tricorder to create an intermittent gravitic pulse to disturb the webbing um, it might even if set at a high enough level destroy it if we place it on the opposite side of the clearing from the shuttle, we might draw the attention of the creature long enough for us to actually, well, sneak inside and observe the situation. We don't necessarily need to risk any of our crew members or split the away team. I like the idea of a thumper. Let's put a thumper in place. Very nice. And what I would say, if you give me two momentum to create that advantage, I will lower the starting difficulty of the extended task. Take it away. All right. Sure, why not? So this extended task has a work track of 12. It has a magnitude of three, a resistance of one. But thanks to your advantage, it starts at a difficulty of two. And up to one person can assist, but someone does need to take charge. This is going to be a insight and con, and, or maybe even a daring and con. And it's a difficulty of two. So whoever wants to lead... I'll take the lead. Okay. okay. Um, can I assist him? If you tell me how you're assisting. Um. Going in front. Halal <laughs> <laughs> <Hello> says. <laughs> um. I will. Uh, use my tricorder to attempt to identify potential blind spots in Rast's flight path. I like it. 
I'm also going to use a momentum for a third die. Okay. Um, and do you want me to also roll Daring Con or, or a different? Uh, I would say roll? either Daring Con or Insight Con for the both of you. Uh, whichever okay. whichever one you guys would rather use. Cool. Um, does my... Oh, wait. If I'm assisting, do I get a focus? You do, yes. Uh, would my survival focus come into play? It most definitely would. So we have three successes already from Rast. So you get that momentum right back. Yeah. No help from Williams, though. But uh, Rast, what I need you to do now is to roll me six challenge die to represent how well you're progressing through these spider webs. Five. So what I would say is you have the option of either spending one momentum to reroll those two zeros, or you can spend the same momentum and just get another success. And what that'll do is it will lower the difficulty on your next task. There you go. We'll just spend the one. Okay. So, uh, you, you know, maybe Rast, you step ahead. You are relying on your own innate sort of uh, faculties, maybe using the presence of this being that you're sensing as sort of a homing beacon. And, you know, Williams maybe speaks up once or twice and goes, hey, Commander, you should... Okay, you've already avoided it. All right. Uh, <laughs> but long story short, you do make a good amount of progress i would say you get about half a kilo, a kilo uh into this darkness and as you maybe turn like as one of you turns to look back at the shuttle you're not 100 percent sure where it came from visually i mean obviously you can pull out a tricorder and see the thumper but if that thumper stops functioning you're gonna have a problem but uh to get the rest of the way i will need another insight or daring plus con the difficulty on this is now only a one. Can I get an assist on this one as well? You may certainly can. And and because we'll potentially get it right back, I'm going to spend the uh, one momentum we've got. Gotcha. Did we not leave breadcrumbs? Yeah, I did suggest that we leave behind radioactive breadcrumbs. I think I might have missed that. So we'll say, we'll retcon a little bit. Yes, you did leave okay. some breadcrumbs. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Boom! Very nice. Five successes, which means you get four Whoa. momentum. Very nice. So, excuse me. Yeah, you're fine. Uh, so Rast, uh, with Williams maybe catching you a, a couple times, the two of you lead the away team until you emerge into what appears to be a clearing between the dark crystalline spires that head up into the darkness. And what you see is quite literally a large banquet table in the middle of this clearing. It's large enough to seat 40 to 50 people. And sure enough, you're seeing your missing crew all seated around it. They're talking, eating. Um, the food that's on the table seems to be standard medieval fare for humans. So lots of uh, roast duck, lots of hams, uh, maybe even a, a few fancier, fancier dishes for the time period. But it's, it's very antiquated is what I would say. It's not a typical, like, quote unquote, modern day meal. Um, and because you succeeded so well... Nobody has noticed you yet, but what probably catches your attention is not the crewman, not the Mad Hatter-like table, but the being that is at the head of the table. Now, to describe this being, um, if you will imagine a drider from D&D, and if you're not familiar with a drider, uh, basically oh. imagine a spider body uh, all the way up to where the head would be, and then from where the head would be comes up a human half, so almost like a spider centaur. And the spider creature uh, is adorned in very fine clothing, uh, probably made of spider silk. Uh, the clothing is white, and it is of a design that is very chaotic. It doesn't have, perhaps, a singular design to it. Like, for example, uh, it maybe starts out checkered and then goes into swirls, or it starts at swirls and goes into zigzags. It's very hard to discern what the purpose of the garment is other than modesty. Um, as for the rest of the creature, uh, they have uh, what appears to be a human face. Uh, they have short cropped white hair that almost comes out at angles at certain parts of their head. And they seem to just be in conversation with Mr. Jensen who is to their left? Oh, this is 
so weird. Uh, Lee, allow the food they're eating, or the now that we're closer to them, do any of them seem to have a imbalance? Yes, I would actually like to take out a tricorder and scan both the being and the crew. Or I don't know if I would assist Alel in that. She's probably got better medicine score than I do. Well, you tell me who's assisting whom. Um, I'll scan. Okay. That's going to be like? reason medicine. Difficulty of two. And you may assist Lee with your own reason medicine. Focus? No, I guess not. Yeah, I don't think you would have a focus here, unfortunately. Do I have a focus of forensic science? <laughs> we we found your power systems. That's what we did. We found your power systems. Uh, yeah, I'll let you have it. Okay. All right, one success from Alel. And that above was a success from Tobin, or Lee. So, uh, the two of you working together, you can confirm that the food is not poisoned. Uh, okay. It is not replicated, though. Like, they're at a sub molecular level, you can tell when something is replicated. This seems to be genuine food, like, literally caught, killed, cooked, etc. Um, as for the creature themselves, um, they are reading as if they are entirely Solanogen based. So they are a, for lack of a better term, they are almost like a walking crystal that is taken human-ish form. Wow. And it's wearing, like, a checkered, like, chaotic outfit? Yes. It almost makes me think of, like, that episode with Fear in Voyager. That would be a good one, yeah. Lieutenant, uh, can you confirm these readings? I don't detect any internal organs, any kind of neural structure. It's almost as if we're looking at a mobile collection of solidogen particles. It's just completely solid. Yeah. I don't even oh. know how it's moving around. There's no muscles. There's no tendons. No joints. Could it be an illusion of some kind? I'm spending two threat because at this point, Jensen sort of turns away to look at someone else at the table. And as he does, Jensen spots all of you and says, oh, hey, Commander Rast, Commander Rast, over here, over here. You dumb idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Rast, will, uh, Rast will walk uh, just confidently in towards the... Uh, in towards the table and he'll address uh, the being. Mm -hmm. Hello. Uh, we have come to uh, retrieve our crewmates. And the creature says, oh, these are yours. Well, I guess that would make sense given you are wearing uh, the same style of uniform. Tell me, do you know where you are? Where, let me rephrase that. Do you know where you are? Um, while what Rest's talking, Maddox will lean over to Alel, uh, scan us to see if we appear as human or Solanogen. And I'm going to give this to you free. If you do that, all of you read as Solanogen. All of you. What? Oh, dear. Uh, Maddox will... <laughs> What does that Maddox mean? <laughs> well, Maddox will turn back to uh, the Arcan the uh, Arcan, and uh, I believe you told me to come find you. Ah, you're the one that Savia told me about. Yes, yes, I did. Is she safe? She's right over there. And she points, and sure enough, Savia is in conversation with other medical staff, and maybe even catches your att your attention, and kind of waves at you. Uh, Maddox will just kind of nod his head and look back at her. So, why did uh, why did you want me to come find you? 
Well, I mean, from what she said, you were a loving husband. And from what I understand about you mortal beings, that's very important. You say mortal as if there is no end of time for you. Well, there's not. If you don't mind me asking, what exactly are you? Solanogen? And a smile creeps across her face. And it seems like a normal smile at first, but maybe it extends further and further, almost like a denobulans until it's very unnerving. And when she opens her mouth to give sort of that toothy smile, um, it's, I think it's Melina from Mortal Kombat that has that sort oh, of extra yeah. jaw structure. Yeah. yeah, so you see that. And the creature says, I am known as many things. Some of you call me the dreamer. <laughs> the Tholians call me God. I am known to your species, pointing at Matic, as Alec Nacha. I've also been called the Chaos Witch K Quillag. Either of the, any of these would work. In answer to your question before, I believe that we are in the proverbial rabbit hole. It's one way to put it. Yes, you are in the dreamlands. I, how much do, I guess, does, who knows the most about Solanogen? Yeah, and it's its relationship to subspace. She's going to just ask this to Lee. Well, uh, I'm not familiar with this concept of the dreamlands, but I have done extensive studies into subspace dynamics. I suppose that would probably be me. So we're not reading as carbon-based anymore. So I noticed, Lieutenant. Um, I'd like to walk up to Commander Rast and turn to the creature, whatever mm -hmm. it is. Um, Madam, whatever my people might call you. May I have a moment with the commander? Please, take your time. Thank you. Commander Rest, would you? He will He will follow. Uh, I will bring him over to Lieutenant Allel and then cross-reference our tricord readings of the crew and of ourselves. Uh, commander, we seem to have made a highly disturbing discovery. All of us are reading as pure Solanogen. We seem to be of the same composition as whatever that is. Mm. I'm reminded of an incident wherein the Starfleet uh, Starship Voyager encountered something that was called the Silver Blood. It created replicas of the entire crew of the Starship Voyager, and those replicas because they were perfect in every respect, came to believe that they were the originals. And on that note, we're going to do a quick scene transition. <laughs> Vassar, you're finally getting a response from the shuttle. Oh, no. <laughs> Captain, the shuttle is responding. Uh, on screen. Er, yeah. So, appearing on screen is the interior of the shuttlecraft. And what you see are the unconscious, or what you hope are the unconscious, forms of the entire away team droped, slumped in their chairs, drooped over consoles. They are simply not responding. Like, it is just an automated feed of them motionless within the interior. I will attempt to piggyback a biometric sensor through the, yeah. the open comm line to see if their vitals are intact. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll me a, for you, because you are, do, well, remind me, what's your medicine, Vassar? Uh, medicine is four. Okay. Then do a reason medicine, and I'll give you the Fenrir assist. Uh, the Fenrir can assist with a communications and science. Sorry, communications and medicine. I'm going to guess that xenobiology doesn't really count here because they're mostly not. the people I hang out with. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, two successes from the show. Oh. 
All right, so uh, with two successes, which is all you needed, I forgot to tell you the difficulty, but uh, with two successes, Vassar, you know how there's REM sleep for humans where you sort of enter into a hyper brain activity state uh, and there's a lot of other things that go with REM, but that's where I'm, I'm focusing is the hyperactivity state. They appear to all be in REM sleep. They appear to be in a REM state, Captain. Otherwise, healthy. All at the same time? Indeed. Are you picking up anything else? Not with this limited bandwidth. Is there anything in the atmosphere of the shuttle? I will attempt to expand our connection to access the shuttle sensors. Okay. And you get a scan of the interior. The interior, standard Class M, it should have. No particulates, no contaminants, just Class M environment. The shuttle sensors are detecting a Class M environment. Uh, how much time do you estimate it remains on life support? There will probably be sufficient life support for us to mount a rescue. Is the shuttle damaged at all? It does not indicate as much. Oh, I thought it was damaged. Okay. Uh, and as you're weighing that, we cut back to the Mad Hatter table, as it were, to resume the conversation between Rast and the others. So is this Lang, then? Wait, what? So, so are we in Lang? Commander, you must be referring to some element of... Terran mythology, of which I am utterly unfamiliar. Hmm. Hold on. I'll ask our host. Mm -hmm. He goes over and... So, are we in Lang? So, out of character. L-A-N-G, right? L-E-N-G. It's been a while since I've, I've actually uh, looked up. Let me look this up to make sure I'm telling you this is the right thing. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, is this the, uh, was this the Avengers thing? Or am I thinking of something else? It's, it's kind of like that. Let's roll. It's basically just an area of the dreamlands within yeah. the Cthulhu mythos. That's what it is. Uh, I knew there was something I'd heard it before. I couldn't place it. Yes. The plateau of Lang. That's what it is. So yes, Alec Nacha says, yes, that is exactly where you are. I believe you will find your bodies over there where you left them. And where are their bodies? Well, their bodies are a little bit different. They were caught in the thing that brought them here. Mm, hold on. Communication is difficult for me. It's sometimes I don't have much... I don't I have guests often. Um Are you aware of the Tholians? Yes. Did you know that they tested a weapon here? It's... I I did not know that. Their weapon is what caught these crewmen and she motions at the table. Caught them in my web. And that is why they are here. I believe it is possible to restore them to their proper state. As for all of you, you simply need go ahead back to your bodies. But how do we prevent it from happening to the next ship to come through? That is something I wish to discuss with you. I am not pleased that the Tholians have done this. I view intrusions on my realm very, shall we say, with an iron fist, I believe is the expression. I would like you to deal with the Tholian. Send a message. They follow uh, something similar that you do, Aklok. Uh, they build their webs and trap their prey within them. 
that is why they worship me as a god. They see me as some sort of higher life form. I am simply a weaver of realms. And you want us to send a message? Yes, in fact, and she kind of looks in the distance off into the darkness. I believe your ship is just now encountering one. And as we cut to the Fenrir again on the view screen, uh, appears a Tholian vessel dropping out of warp. No! <laughs> and the Tholian vessel is huge. This is a dreadnought Holy class shit. vessel that has dropped out of warp. And you are being hailed, Captain. Uh, before she answers, she's going to ask Vassar. Uh, what's your rank again? Lieutenant Commander? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Commander, where is that ship from? I don't recognize it. Ship registry suggests that it is from the Tholian assembly. Okay. And the Tholians are hailing you. She kind of like tugs her uniform and stands up straight and she says on screen. Peering on screen is a blue hued Tholian. And for those who don't know what Tholians are, they are quite literally crystalline spiders or almost like an ant that is made out of crystal. They don't really have a humanoid shape, but they have, like, vague things that approach a humanoid shape. So they have a torso. They've got the spiny legs. Uh, they have... Uh, they are literally made out of crystals, where I think I'm going with this. And the crystal, the blue crystal in hue, it has no mouth, but it says, I am Commander Nostreen of the Tholian Assembly. You will leave this space immediately. You are trespassing. Uh, out of character, we're not in their space. We're on the border. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. We are not trespassing. We're patrolling the border. Well, your so border, you have no jurisdiction here. Your borders are incorrect. We accounted for stellar drift, and this area of space has been ours for the last decade. We are simply reclaiming it. <laughs> well, perhaps if you came out of your um, area of space more often we would have the same maps as it is i have crew away on a mission in this area so i would politely request that you give us time to conclude that and then we will happily leave all right we're gonna make this a task because it's a good argument but i want to see how it goes over with nostrine okay. this is going to be a presence command it's going okay. to be a difficulty of five and I'm going to spend some threat to make the complication range a 16 to 20. So you're probably going to want to blow all your momentum and your determination on this. Okay. Um, so how much momentum do we have? Four at the moment. Okay, so if I... Are you guys okay with me cashing that in? Yeah, absolutely. So how many dice do I roll for four? So that would depend if whether or not you're using your determination. Uh, if oh. you're using determination, then it's two dice for a third die, or four di or four momentum and one threat for four dice. But if you're not using momentum, or sorry, if you're not using determination, then it's three momentum for a total of four dice. It's a little confusing, and I know. And do augmented ability and diffuse the tension apply? Most definitely, yes. Okay. Would I be able to assist by monitoring the universal translator to make sure all of the appropriate niceties are translated appropriately? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Vassar, you can assist with a control and a command. So what's the benefit to using one determination and, what, three momentum? So is that what that would be? Yeah, yeah. So what the what determination does as a reminder, uh, you can spend it before the roll to get two free successes. Okay. And that is basically counting a, an additional dice, which is already rolled a one, and that's okay. why the dice cost is different because you're you're technically buying another die, 
even though you use determination to buy it, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I'm rolling three d20, and I, I'm using determination already. Okay. So what is the value mean? you are applying for determination? Um... Hmm. Well, that doesn't work. Um if power systems could be used the way it is. <laughs> no. You know, well, it's a value. Proud and honest. You're being honest with them and open. You Yeah, but I have to challenge that, right? No, no, no. You just have to apply it. Oh, okay. Proud and honest then. And, honest. Okay. and I also have interstellar law and politics as a value. Good, good, uh, good value. Good focus. Okay, so I'm rolling 3d20 with a focus. Correct. Okay. Okay, so that's very important because uh, that is five successes, which is what you needed. Okay. But there's a complication on the field. So, Nostreen says you have 30 of your minutes after which we will be removing your presence by force and then the screen cuts off and that's where we're going to take our break oh gosh so uh we will be back in 10 minutes everybody see you in a bit
All right, and welcome back, everyone, to the second part of uh, episode 12. And uh, if you missed us uh, up until now, the away team has encountered Alec Nacha, the Dreamweaver from Lovecraftian lore, while the main Fenrir has encountered uh, the Adelicite, a dreadnought, a Tholian dreadnought, that has told them they have 30 minutes to get the hell out of their space. And we're going to resume pretty much with the communication just have it ended with the Tholians, meaning that Archuleta and Vassar and uh, I believe Cartwright and any other supporting characters on the bridge have a moment to discuss matters. Okay, so we have 30 minutes ish, maybe less, to um, figure out a way to filter through all of this noise so we can contact our crew. Any ideas? Well, Captain, far be it for me to make a suggestion out of turn, but uh, perhaps uh, Lieutenant Commander Vassar might take another shuttlecraft in. He may not be affected by this strange energy field or whatever it is that has disabled our fellow crewmates. I What's was thinking the... about just transferring my program on the, ha the hail stream that we had raised earlier. Oh, yes, a, a vastly superior idea, sir. I'm glad that you thought of it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> is that possible? <laughs> I mean, give you enough techno babble, anything's possible. Okay. <laughs> um, pretty hacky. <laughs> but... Now, what I would say is that if Vassar did transfer his program to the shuttle, um, probably what would happen is you would be confined to the shuttle. Like, you wouldn't be able to leave because you don't have a mobile emitter with you there. Apparently, our people are on the shuttle. Mm. Vassar does not know any other things that may have happened down there. That mm. looks like, uh, okay. Yeah. It's true. Well, I'd like to figure out before I send Vassar to the shuttle, I'd like to figure out a way to block out this extra noise on the free on frequencies and our sensors so we can actually use them to navigate. All right. Now, what I would say is that it is possible to do so. It would be a daring science or a daring engineering. It would be a difficulty of five, but it is possible. And the ship would assist you with a sensors and we'll call it sensors and engineering. I'll roll for the ship. I don't think. And what What's I would say right here, again? cart rate is security, I believe. Security. Um, but what I would say here is that failing this role is simply going to mean that time has taken place. Mm -hmm. And this will take 30 minutes, a.k.a. your time limit, um, unless you give me one momentum to reduce that to 15 minutes. Okay. So it's really how lucky do you feel? I don't know if I'm that the juice is worth the squeeze for that. We what do you guys could think? We could attempt to produce a subspace resonance pulse around the ship that would identify uh, the filaments that we are surrounded in and provide navigational data to get us out safely. It would be like a ancient radar on earth okay and we're not stuck right now nope well uh, other than the fact impaled. you've got an away team but nah. <laughs> um i thought we were like impaled by a tendril or something uh, a tendril did pierce through the entire uh midships of the ship but it didn't stay there oh okay okay uh so Power wise, are the systems like, can we move if we could do that? Yeah, you could move. Okay. So let's try and do that, Masar. Okay. All right. Daring science. Daring science. 
Uh, significantly different task. Uh, where are you trying to move specifically? Let's let's ask that question. My recommendation would be to at least face the enemy ship, since it seems to have appeared behind us. Okay, let's roll with that. Uh, let's do a daring science, uh, difficulty of three, and the ship will assist you with a sensor science. Uh, theoretical physics? Most definitely. Um, could I tap a supporting character to... Uh, which supporting character did you want to tap? Uh, I've got my Cardassian science officer, Guil Rall. Sure. If you, uh, you would like uh, them to assist, I can throw them onto the bridge. Uh, and you said that would be a daring science? Daring science. And um, Ensign Rall has uh, the sensors and astrometrics focuses. Would either of those come into play? Most definitely. Now, we do have a problem here, because even if you were to assist, because Vassar has not actually rolled any successes, that means you cannot assist here. <clears throat> so, Vassar, same option here uh, as the big difficult task. You can either give me one momentum to make it so that your attempt took 15 minutes, or you spend no momentum and it takes your full 30. I will give you a momentum. Okay, so 15 minutes pass, you get nowhere. The ship has not moved, your radar situation is just not working, everything you're trying is coming up nil. Captain, the complications persist. Uh, I believe we may have time to attempt once more um, at your discretion. I don't think, um, I don't think we want to try that again. Uh, so, yeah. And again, Williams, oh, go ahead. Are you gonna say something? Oh, uh, I was gonna, I was gonna have Rawl interject if I could, please. Uh, Captain, I believe it's possible to succeed here. It seems, according to my readings, that there are some residual ion particles in the main deflector may be causing interference. How much time would it take to scrub the main deflector for a clear reading? GM? About five minutes. Why do we always have to cut these things so close? <laughs> <laughs> and also, we still have our crew out there, so just turning the ship around is not getting them back. And to let you mull that over, we're going to go back to the uh, dining banquet in the forest. <clears throat> so, uh, it is at this point that Evak has uh, looked directly at Commander Rast. And as a reminder, she last said, I need you to take a message back to the Tholians for me. And how would you propose that we get that message to them? I want them to know that if they attempt to use their new toy anymore, I will be taking something from them that they hold most precious. And what might that be? And she raises an arm and sort of motions off to her left side and almost as if appearing, a spiderweb coalesces and then grows denser and denser until it becomes almost like a portal uh, into... Uh, almost like a, a portal to elsewhere. And in the portal, you can see that there is what appears to be a, a heart-shaped, like a human heart-shaped organ that is made out of crystal. And she says, This artifact is one that the Tholians believe belongs to me. It does. But the point I'm making is that I will be stealing the crystalline heart, or really taking it back, if they do not behave. We can definitely pass this on to the Tholians if you are... Uh, if you are so gracious as to return our crew to our ship. 
as I said, I can only do so much, but if you wish me to attempt something, I certainly can. And what do you mean by attempt? <laughs> as I said, I am a, a weaver of realms. I believe what you call subspace, I call the dreamlands. There are an infinite number of possibilities and an infinite number of combinations. It is possible, just highly unlikely. And Jensen actually speaks up and says, Commander, I, I think we should try it. We need to return our crew to our ship. Uh, any, any other tasks that are to be done for you are a non-starter without that. And uh, again, the unnatural toothy smile crosses Alec Notch's face and she says, very well. I will make the first gesture. And... With her other hand, the, the one that's not generating the portal, she does a wave across the table. And I'm going to roll some dice here. You do not want me to see any 20s. Also, with uh, uh, Rast, with his talent of Dauntless, mm -hmm. is definitely like not flinching or showing any sort of intimidation from her. Okay. Or doing his best to not. Okay. All right, so very important roll. Okay, this is good. No twenties. Oh very, very close, but no twenties. Oh my god! So as she waves her hand, the individuals Jensen, Savia, the other crew that has gone missing, they begin to fade out of reality. It's almost as if someone took a a filter and literally just slid their transparency setting to zero. Or to 100%. And as they dematerialize, for lack of a better word, um, on the ship, Vassar, you're detecting the, re the return of your crew. Not the away team, the rest of the crew that went missing. Captain, internal sensors are showing that all of our missing crew members are reappearing. Health and vitals are intact. Is there a an origin? Negative. Uh, okay, so was there any, I guess no senior staff was taken. So uh, this is I wonder Captain if this is where Tisavia. Vassar notices Rast is missing. <laughs> yeah, I think this is probably Vassar you notice Rast is missing by now. <laughs> uh, Captain to sickbay, or Savia, wherever she is. Uh, this is Savia, go ahead. Where were you guys? A long story, Captain. Uh, can you get a message to the away team? I can't. The sensors and communication is... There's something blocking that. Vassar? It's not blocking anymore. We appear to have a clear channel now, Captain. Well, uh, hail the away team. Vassar to away team. Commander asked, you get a comm badge chirp. Away team, please response. Commander Rast here. Commander Rast, uh, I only noticed that you were missing a moment ago. Uh, <laughs> there is a Tholian vessel uh, near us that is uh, threatening to give us a very bad day uh, should we not leave in the next 12 minutes. Are um, you able to return to the ship? Are you able to patch me in to speak to the Tholians? Captain, Commander Rast is asking to be patched into the Tholians. Rast, what could you possibly have to say to them? Trust me, Captain. All right. So Bree is going to hail the Tholian ship. Okay. You set up a three-way call. Okay. And as Nostreen, the blue-hued Tholian, comes back onto the view screen. Obviously, Rast, you can't see them, but you do get some sort of, like, chirp from your combat that indicates you have been put through. All right. Listen, not only are you going to no longer harass our ship, 
but you are going to give us plenty of time to leave this sector of space and you are going to cease any sort of activities with the weapon that you de de detonated in this part. So saith uh, uh, Atluk Nash. I'm going to give you an advantage here because you mentioned her name. It's going to be a difficulty four. It was a five. We knocked it down to a four. It's a presence command. It has a complication range of 17 to 20. <laughs> And I have three threat left. Do I save it or do I use it? I'm going to save it. So difficulty four, complication <clears throat> rate 17 to 20, presence command. Mm -hmm. If you have intimidation, if you have... Um, persuasion. A, persuasion, <laughs> aggressive <Okay>. negotiations. <laughs> and, and he's also going to say, and if you do not agree to these terms, she will take back the crystal heart. Okay. Can I help with determination, or did I already... You already used you your use point, mine. unfortunately. Okay, that's fine. But I don't believe Rast has, right? I have not. So, so big fan of living. <laughs> I will be using my <laughs> determination. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and I will be calling upon... Um, you know, I know that the captain's in trouble, so I'm actually going to use my uh, value of indebted to the captain. Okay. So that starts you off with two free successes. We just need to see two more. All right. And um, I need to spend how many, How much momentum to get another die? Uh, one momentum and one threat. Yeah, let's do it. Do it. Okay. And you said presence. Command. Command. All right. Well, you know, it's not bad. And that's three dice. Mm -hmm. And that's a that's a focus. Oh boy, here we go, guys. For all the marbles. <sighs> okay. Good news. You have five successes on the board. I do, have a, I do have a complication. Get a complication. You do have a complication. <laughs> And actually, I have, uh, yeah, one, two, three, four, oh, five. Oh, don't you have augmented presence six. as well? Yeah. So I have six successes. So you have yeah. six successes. So you do get uh, two momentum. You can immediately spend that two <clears throat> momentum to buy off that complication. Done. Done. <laughs> All right. So Nostreen, on the view screen, Captain, you see Nostreen almost like chitter or shake. And Rast, of course, you can't see this, but... Uh, Nostreen, still in that very high-pitched, almost like grating Tholian voice, uh, Nostreen says, How do you know her? I am sitting with her right now. You dare say that you are in the lands of Loud? She, she has invited us here because she is worried about her people. The Tholians. And the weapon that you uh, detonated here has disturbed her realm. So Tholians don't really cry and they don't really oh. show emotion. But if there were a way to qualify what's going through Nostreen's head right now, they have just been told by a messiah that their god is very angry with them and it's all their fault. So Nostreen, I think, following the character motivation, would end communication very suddenly. And the Adelicite, the Tholian Dreadnought, immediately turns 180 degrees and warps the hell out of there. <laughs> so am I now an emissary? <laughs> you are the redeemer. The rest. Um, Captain, the Tholians are booking it. Commander, I don't know how you do it, <laughs> but just get back here. And uh, he will bow to uh, Nacha. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you very much for your guidance and understanding. We will now take our leave. Uh, Actually, Commander, could I interject for a moment? Sure. He looks off to the side. 
uh, uh, Mistress Adlek Nacha, your realm, I, I must say, and he looks around at the ethereal twilight and the sort of gleaming silver spider threads surrounding the entire area, is incredibly fascinating. And I think that all of our peoples here assembled have a great deal to learn from you. Would you be willing to allow some kind of means of communication between you and our peoples? Again, an unnerving smile. She looks to Rast again and says, From what I know of Starfleet, you like having ambassadors aboard, is that correct? Yes. I can pull some strings, I believe is the phrase, and manifest a copy of myself to answer this one's request. That is a most generous offer. And we accept. So the uh, hand that was generating the portal comes back to her. She waves a hand over her face, over her body, and then puts the hand off to the side again. And materializing in the space is a one-to-one -one copy of her. And says, she carries whatever name you give her. What, you exper what she experiences will come back to me. However, she will not have my powers. I am unable to duplicate myself in such regard. But I believe you have a new member of your crew. And the, the duplicate sort of looks around, uh, nods, and says, well, this is an interesting sensation. <laughs> um, how large are uh, like Naka and her twin... Compared to, let's say, like the Squirpy. Uh, about the same size. So they're going to have, probably going to have to have the corridors to themselves, if you get my meaning. Yeah. Uh, and Matic will just kind of look at the new crew member and just be like, all right, so we're like Ophine and just adopting shit again. Awesome. As a result of that, I'd also like to challenge my value, uh, which is... Some things are better left unknown, or some things man was not meant to know. Okay. I think that's... don't intend to use it, but this is a, a fascinating new experience for Tobin, and uh, he wants to take advantage of it. I like it. All right. So, Alec Nacha, the, the full one, says, And with that, I'm not telling you to get the hell out of my realm, but I do have a mess to clean up. Um. Would we be able to cut through, or would you prefer us to walk around the webbing? She waves her hand, and literally appearing in a clearing adjacent to yours is the shuttle. Even more convenient. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. The after effects of the weapon, is that something you'll be able to handle, or would we need to handle it on the outside of the realm? As I said, it will require significant work on my end, but it is possible. Could we assist you in any way? No offense, but I would prefer to handle this on my own. Of course. I meant none in turn. We have overstayed our welcome. Let us go. So you and head we back. head toward the shuttle. All right. So it's a very interesting sensation. When you cross through the airlock, it's almost like a blanket, a heavy blanket has been lifted off of yourselves. And instead of stepping into the shuttle proper, you wake up in what your positions were prior to leaving the airlock the very first time. And with you is the seemingly copy of Alec Nacha. Does anyone else feel like that was a dream? We were in the dreamlands and under the assumption I'm ta I'm viewing it as if you know we were the Borg entering Unimatrix Zero. It exists, but at the same time it doesn't Very Williams odd, you get us as out of don't really sleep I that much. Would love to try. 
All right. So, Williams, you power back up the shuttle, and you find that there's a clear path from where you are back to the Fenrir. You see the Fenrir loud and clear. Yeah. Approach is tranquil, Commander. Take us home. All right. Shuttle, you are cleared for docking. And with that, we are going to skip ahead a little bit. And we are going to go to a senior staff meeting. Because I think you all have a lot to discuss. Uh, who am I missing on this? I'm missing Ras. That's who I'm missing. Let's get Rast on here. All right. So we cut to the conference room. Maybe about a day later, uh, the Fenrir has already left the affected area of space. Uh, you are headed probably back to Starbase for repairs. Uh, but everything else appears to be, well, I wouldn't say ship shape. You literally have holes in the hull. But things are approaching normal again for the crew. Uh, so Bree is going to, I guess, turn to Tobin and maybe the Sar, and ask, do we know the cause after looking through our reports of the two bodily deaths that we encountered early in the mission? I'm afraid, Captain, that remains largely a mystery, but given that we seem to enter some form of subspace stasis, I would hazard a guess that it was the after effects of that realm bleeding into ours. Um, I imagine if we cross-reference the sensor records of our experiences, or our physical body's experiences, while our minds were in the, the so-called dreamlands, we might find that we were in the same kind of subspace stasis. Mm. So we shouldn't have any after effects then. I just want to make sure we don't need to have more than just yearly physicals for the crew. Well, I certainly wouldn't uh, object to more strenuous physiological and psychological evaluations for the entire crew. And Dr. Saniri and uh, Savio Matic, I'm sure, would be happy to provide them. Very well. So our new guest... And she kind of looks at you, Rast, and uh, she kind of just waits for you to maybe elaborate. Well, uh, first, Captain, I, I apologize for not explaining what I was going to be doing with the Tholians, but uh, I think it worked out for the best. And uh, our new guest uh, is actually um, with us because of... Uh, Lieutenant Commander Lee, uh, his insight into that particular situation uh, allowed us a an ambassador from a from a subspace realm could be could prove very useful. And so the nature of our uh, arrangement, Commander Lee, is exactly what. Well, I requested the opportunity to open up diplomatic ties with this new subspace pocket, this realm that is known as the Dreamlands, and the chance to learn more about its denizens. Uh, there's an incalculable wealth of information that we can gain about this subspace realm. As of this moment, the only real contact that we've had with Solange and base life has been, well, conflict with the creatures that attempted to abduct members of the Enterprise D's crew. This is an opportunity to open up a line of dialogue with that realm and the kinds of species and life forms that live in that area. I love it. The more friends out here, the better, especially when we have people like the Tholians breathing down our neck. Uh, see to it that she has rather generous accommodations. Affirmative. Anything else to report? I still have no idea how I woke up on the shuttle, Captain, but I feel that it worked out for the best. Weren't you with us all along? Yeah. I was? <laughs> you don't remember boarding the... I no. came and got you from your room, and then we boarded the shuttle. 
Mm. Uh, I, I do don't even remember. remember you being around at all before we sent the away team. I was actually preparing um, reports and uh, statuses for for you, Captain, in my room. And the next thing I remember, I woke up in the shuttle. I have a distinct recollection of you being with us during several staff meetings. Okay. Inter internal sensors clearly record you boarding the shuttlecraft with the West of the Wii team. With the <laughs> wait, wait, <laughs> West? West? He, he whittled the check off there. It's okay. <laughs> West, uh, Vassar, do I need to check out your uh, local um... Waskily West? No, this is probably the result of the last time you checked out my vocal subprocessors. Please don't. <laughs> you may still be a uh, experiencing some lingering after effects of the overstimulation with data from the Fenrir's sensor systems. Probably. And, and I may have to uh, go see uh, sick bay again. Maybe there's still some resonant effects from the encounter with the, the empathic planet. Um, you may be interested in an old friend of mine, a uh, counselor in Elan is a uh, Betazoid counselor who worked with me on the Arcadia. Um, you may be interested in getting in touch with him. Uh, no matter what ship I'm on, it seems that very similar occurrences happen. Um... Maybe you two could find a mutual and beneficial friendship. Um, if all else fails, you have a counselor on call that you can uh, use for insanity claims that you don't need to use. <laughs> Thank you, Commander. I, I shall take it under advise, advisement. There is a very slight and momentary uh, expression of discomfort when you mention him uh, actually uh, interacting with a, a Betazoid. I have made a note. And as everybody sort of looks around the table, you know, seeing if anybody has any last things, uh, Captain, you get a comm badge chirp. Go ahead. Uh, this is Sick Bay. Uh, just following up, letting you know everybody's fine. Uh, however, I would be remiss if I didn't say that the crew is wondering if Fight Club is still happening. Oh God. Uh, what time is it about? Uh, you're coming off of the end of Alpha Shift. You would be going into Beta. So technically, if you all wanted to hit the holodeck. <laughs> yeah. Um. Tell everyone to just meet us at holodeck one very good are we still having the same two opening combatants williams and rast is that what we had down uh i currently have three to one odds on rast okay three to one are you serious <laughs> <laughs> 10 minutes and then she looks at williams and rast and like grins i'm hurt <laughs> uh matic just uh, computer initiate uh, Arcadian fight fight night uh, procedure Alpha three one. Mm -hmm. um, all the monitors then kind of go out and then they'll come back on and it'll be like super cheesy fucking early two thousands boxing opening. <laughs> um, there's it kind of shows into the ring on the hollow deck. Uh, you have like super cheesy announcers who were doing like the big like hand motions um, oh i have them ready i have them ready <laughs> but it's and that's on the consoles it's on the every consoles. console it's, every it's being screen. streamed throughout the oh. entire ship it's over oh, the oh, communication okay. system freeze like I'm, um, I'm watching this in person i don't know about you all <laughs> but uh a part comes up that says uh if wanting to bet see matic in uh mess hall oh my gosh. <laughs> nice <laughs> he'll, he'll quickly put his hand out over and just be like what no, Captain, I'll meet you there. I need to go to mess hall first. I'm feeling hungry. Uh, nice. Commander, I can see that on my pad. <laughs> nice. 
Well, if Williams and Rass were to leave the room, we could discuss and place our own personal bets. So, did you set the odds? Gambling is, that... is against Starfleet protocol, Commander. It wasn't my question. <laughs> Three to one. Three to one. I swear. <laughs> so very important question before I change maps. Uh, is Vassar going in person and is Lee going in person? <clears throat> or is Cartwright going? Because I think Cartwright I, would be... Yes, I would take Cartwright down to observe <laughs> this uh, gentleman's sport. Very good. <laughs> Barbaric <Barthing> display. <laughs> the holiday has infiltrated his program and his <laughs> is now Tyler Durden. Nice. <laughs> nice. Jeez. Oh lord. All right. Just move it move it to the side a little bit. There, there you go. There you go. All right. <laughs> so, in keeping of the cheesy theme, uh this is more or less the best map I could find. So, if you oh imagine my god. Oh, yes. yes. So yes, <laughs> in the middle of the uh, middle of the hexagon, you have oh a Vulcan, uh, who some people might recognize from uh, the Avenger game, but uh, the Vulcan says, "Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we will be having a fight between two very prized fighters in the corner, weighing approximately eighty kilos. Wait, whatever. I present to you, Commander Rast." And Commander Rast, you enter with big columns of steam shooting up. Maybe a little bit of uh, sparkling stuff coming off of the edges of the corridor. It's entirely over the top and unnecessary. <laughs> and uh, as you step in, uh, Arnold then points to the opposite and corner and says, And laying approximately the same amount, I present to you, Commander Williams! And again, Williams, <laughs> in far too ostentatious affair. <laughs> Can I uh, have tweaked the program just a little bit? Sure. Um, so there's, there's no pyro and Williams comes at song. Why can't we be friends by war? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, as you two approach one another into the middle of the arena, Arnold just simply says, all right, I want a nice clean fight. I do not want to see any chopping to the balls. I want it to be very clean. <laughs> Whose idea was this? I have no idea, Commander. A uh, broadcast comes across. Uh, betting odds have changed. It is now five to one odds against Williams. Please see Commander Maddock in mess hall for uh, for betting purposes. You better be ready to lose some money. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant uh, Cartwright would tap his com badge. Uh, Commander Maddock, uh, I'd like to place fifty quatloos on uh, <laughs> Commander Williams, please. I like what those <laughs> Roughly equivalent Amazing. to a latinum show. Let's, 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 <laughs> sure. That's, okay, I'll put you down for that. Um, is there anything else? Any other um, interesting yeah, effects you want to add? Is there any other uh, interesting things you want to add? You want to uh, add on to the bit? Um, wardrobe malfunctions, who draws <laughs> blood first? Wardrobe uh, malfunctions. <laughs> No, we got no. a first punch is going to be a left or a right hander. I mean, we we got bets all day long. So you're adding prop bets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, why not? Is, is telepathy allowed in this fight? That would be most unsportsmanlike. Bad form. Not an answer to the question. <laughs> Bree's going to lean over to Cartwright on his comm with Maddox and be like, "Add fifty to that. I'll go in with you, Cartwright." <laughs> wow. All right. Excellent choice, madam. <laughs> so Arnold basically begins describing uh, the rules of this fight. And I'm handling it out of character because I want everybody to be clear. So the way it's going to work is both Rast and Williams. You start off with three momentum. So you each have your own pools here. And this momentum is treated like threat for the other person. So for example, let's say Williams wants to make a really, really hard first punch. So he wants to roll five dice. So he would need to spend six momentum. Well, he only has three. So what would happen is he would spend his three momentum and then Rast would get three momentum of his own. So basically any threat spends go to the other person. So it's kind of a checks and balances of 
Do you feel lucky? Do you want to give them an advantage? Something like that. The other thing is that if you want to spend for any weapons, it's supposed to be hand-to-hand, -hand, but as far as Arnold's concerned, as long as no actual injury occurs, um, you can basically get whatever, and you would just pay momentum a momentum cost to get that weapon, because you're in a holodeck. You can just say, holodeck, give me saber. Holodeck, give me a whip, etc. Um, the other rule that we're going to have is that um, it is the first to two injuries, because if we just did the one injury, it's whoever gets the first good hit in and it's boring. If we do the two injuries, it's a little more exciting. Um, but as long as you both agree to those terms, uh, Arnold's just going to kind of step back and say, very well, the fight will begin in five, four. And he counts down and then sort of with like an, an air horn sounding, uh, the hologram of Arnold vanishes and we have our fighters going at it. So who would like to make the first act here? <clears throat> and actually, Williams will just sort of square up and go, after you. Uh, Rast will just take a step forward. Um, do we? Uh, yeah, and he kind of leans forward a little bit. Do we really want to give them the you know, satisfaction? What do you have in mind? Really mess up Maddox Day if we both just left. <laughs> Williams is just going to sort of look at everybody in the audience. Bree's going to... Oh, shit. But the <laughs> captain is expecting a show. <laughs> Well, let's. I have an idea let's... if you will allow me to interject. Mm -hmm. Sure. What if you both get knocked out? I'm thinking. Uh, so, actually, at this point, Rast is going to uh, be using telepathy with uh, Williams. Okay. And uh, basically be like, for our own purposes, let's do a little bit. But in the end, we should both, you know, have a simultaneous knockout. Captain, are they allowed to negotiate the That's terms of their not, fight? No. <laughs> That's and, uh, not, no. That's not. Vegas <laughs> would be very upset with you. And uh, Williams is just going to sort of cock his head and there you go. Ah, tempting as that is. I'm going to have to opt for option B. I'm going to punch him in the face. <laughs> nice. All right. All right. Here we go. So uh, it is a daring security from each of you. Hand to hand applies as a focus. It is a difficulty one to start with. And uh, let's have a gentleman's agreement that we handle any momentum rolling before any rolls are made. That way it's not like one person rolls and the other person goes, oh, I'll just spend momentum to roll more kind of a thing. Uh, this is not going to go well. I can see this already. Oh, boy. Okay. So Williams has two successes. Mm-hmm. Just... Two successes. Oh. So, Williams, because you are the acting character, you get in the first punch. So go ahead and roll me uh, five challenge dice, please. Uh... Mine is, my unarmed strike looks like it's supposed to be six on my sheet, though. Uh, oh, right, because you have a five, so yes, it is six. And, oh, that's right, challenge dice, six. <laughs> so, Williams, you come in with the punch, and you go a little bit limp-wristed, or maybe it was like a, a joke punch, because when it hits Rast, Rast, you take two stress, but that's it. You just kind of get like, eh. And you I'm, just... not gonna, I'm not just going to blast him in the face with the first one. He's got he's to gotta know what's going on. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and have that to one. <laughs> nice. You know, nice. It's a pimp slap, okay? Just... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and and with that, uh, Rast will do a uh, spinning back kick. 
kick to uh, to Williams and say, very well, then. So you're roundhouse kicking him, basically. Correct. Nice. I love it. Yeah. And uh, and with that, he is going to spend one momentum. OK. However, I actually do that. Uh, you would click on the little icon of the cards and you would drag it off to there the map. Is. And then you would use the backspace of the delete button with the momentum token selected. Good. So does that mean that I get one? Is he like giving me threat there? Or? No, no, no. He's just no. spending one from his All pool. Right, cool. But cool, if cool. you basically, before he rolls, if you want to add momentum, you got to say it before he rolls. Um. No. No, we're not going to do that yet. Okay. So let's see what happens. Oh, complication. Interesting. <laughs> um, still daring plus security. Yes. Yeah, all this is going to be daring security. Cool. Okay. So Rast, I'll give you an option. You can either roundhouse kick him very well, or... You can roundhouse kick him a little bit less harder than you thought, but you won't suffer the complication. Hmm. Damn the torpedoes. Let's go for the full kick. Full, full speed kick. ahead. Uh -huh. All right. Go ahead and roll me uh, five challenge dice, please. Now, I should say, I should say, and we'll do this from attacks onward because I should have said it when Williams did his roll. You can spend momentum to re-roll dice here. So from this on, remember, you can spend momentum to re-roll dice. But okay. Rast, as you go in with the kick uh, and it, it maybe connects with uh, the upper torso of Williams, it's the same sort of effect that the punch had. It's it's barely felt. I mean, you you uh, Williams, you take all of two stress of damage and you're just like... Was that it? Was that your best shot? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'll just I'll just say for for flavors purposes, Williams is a boxer, mm -hmm. um, and so he'll sort of scornfully look at Rask and go, kicking, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, just uh, try to throw a combination. Okay. All right, come on. Remember, you can spend momentum. Oh, I, I know. Oh, that is a significant number of successes. So Williams, another six challenge dice, please. Give me six. OK, now this is important because nice. this is five, which is enough for an injury. So go ahead and describe how well you strike Rast enough to cause an injury. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to say as Rast comes off the roundhouse, um, <clears throat> He's momentarily off balance, and Williams comes in low with a uh, a couple of hard body shots and then an uppercut. Okay. So, Rash, your head is cocked backwards from the force of the blow, and you see stars for a moment, but as your head comes back down, you maybe have a moment of clarity that you're damn sure you can do the same thing to him. <laughs> Probably can. He definitely can, as a matter of fact. It's... <laughs> All right, so uh, Rast is just going to do uh, a spinning back fist. Okay. Spending any momentum? No. Okay. I love how this fight, like, as Matic can attest, like, beforehand, everybody was dumping threat. Like, they'd give each other six threat bombs. And... <laughs> it's very interesting to see a, uh, a sort of a conservative Please, fight. fight. All right, that's two successes from Rast. Can Williams? Right. Williams would have to get three successes here. All right. And he does. Oh, oh he does. So Good Williams, job. Williams, as he comes with the spinning backhand, you catch his hand mid motion with one of your hands. And then come in with a gut shot with your other. So, Williams, roll me another six challenge die here. Okay. Oh. Now, remember. I'm going to spend the momentum to reroll those. Is that is that something I can do? You certainly can. Mm -hmm. Spend the momentum and reroll those two zeros. 
two. And that is enough. Yep. So unfortunately, Rast, uh, your backhand <laughs> is caught and the gut shot hits you so hard that it knocks the wind out of you. And you fall to a knee as Arnold reappears and says, Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner, Commander Williams. Yeah, I'm just... Uh, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Um, no, I'm just going to throw... <laughs> is Matic here or is he in the... Is he in the... Oh, he's still in the mess hall. In the mess hall. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna look at you know if there's like a you know like a, a hollow camera like floating there or a hollow imager. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna point at the camera and go five to one my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm imagining that Matic is gone. It's like because he's been part of several of these fight clubs, he's expanded this out to where it's like like in uh, WWE, you always have the dude that like runs out into the ring with the camera <laughs> doing like the zoom in on the face and all that. Mm -hmm. Um, whenever William says that, he'll get a, uh, notification that says, uh, uh, here's your cut. Congratulations on winning the fight from Matic. And it'll be, it'll be a significant sum. It'll be like Matic put quite a bit of money on Williams and then rigged the odds. So that way when Williams won, he would win a lot of money. Yeah. That sounds like that's, a Matic thing to do. That's cool. cool. Bitch. <laughs> uh, but I'm I'm gonna I'm I'm definitely uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely help Rast up if he'll like you know just offer him a hand if he'll take it. Yeah, and he'll just straighten his uh, straighten his shirt out. Yeah, it's like maybe like checkers next time. This was not my idea. I still don't know whose idea this was. Everybody just slowly looks in the captain's direction, just very slowly. <laughs> the uh, the hollow deck is one of those things that kind of sets me off balance to begin with. Yeah, uh, I mean, thanks for not using telepathy. That's appreciate it. Anybody ever tell you you're when I hit you in the face, it's like punching a skillet. <laughs> Right, all right. Well, thank you. It was invigorating. And as Rast and Williams walk off uh, and begin what apparently might be a bromance in other adventures, that is where we're going to end today's session. So thank you all so much for a uh, lovely session. Hopefully you had fun. I thought that would be a fun little epilogue to our uh, two-parter. Mm -hmm. uh, next session, I'll talk with the players off stream about this, but this is where I'm going to end the stream proper. So Twitch, YouTube, thank you all so much for watching, and you'll see these guys next week. Bye, stream. Bye, guys.